Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful, bright, sunny day that your presence within each one of our hearts can be the same. Bless all those who are listening on, that they too may be granted thy peace, thy blessing. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, and I welcome you to the whirlwind. God states in Amos 3, verse 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. There is a great prophetic activity building up upon the horizon, and we can see it coming. A whirlwind is warning, is sounding loudly for only those who have eyes to read their scripture and ears to hear the Holy Spirit. Because in Matthew 24 verse 4, Jesus stated to the disciples about preparing for the end time one sentence. That one sentence he stated should be loudly understood with ears to hear. Be not deceived. Amen. Because this scenario can happen and it does happen and it will happen to the most of us. Taken from early writings, Ellen White states, I fix my eyes upon this train. It seemed that the whole world was on board, that there could be not one left. Said the angel, they are binding in bundles to be burned. Then he showed me the conductor, who appeared like a stately, fair person, whom all the passengers looked up to and reverenced. I was perplexed and asked my attending angel who it was. He said, it is Satan. He is the conductor in the form of an angel of light. He has taken the whole world captive and they're giving over to the strong delusions to believe a lie that they may be damned. We are sitting in time right in the middle of this verse I'm about ready to show you. This verse has the whirlwind in it. And as I said before, it's coming. Let's examine our position. Daniel 11 verse 40. At the time of the end, which we all know is 1798, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Our present time now is just before that king of the north comes against him, the king of the south, like a whirlwind. Why? The emphasis is on the word push. With the left in government, the religious right attacks in a whirlwind. With all of its resources, like we can transliterate it for today, chariots is transportation. Ships, commerce, and all the business world. Horsemen, the military. The left has become so powerful and widespread that it will require more powerful resources to conquer it. The push between these two forces escalates and to list a few that certain states today are pushing back against the federal executive orders to maintain order, like freedoms and protections from critical race theory and their curriculum to change America, 
vaccine passports, gender confusion of inviting genders into dormitories for all kinds of problems, speech, is there freedom of speech, gun control, taking away our guns. And Texas is talking about building the border themselves. The push is continuing. And certainly our freedom of speech is challenging where you want to zip up and just listen because you will find offense and hatred and shame coming back at you if you don't speak the narrative. Rewriting history in our Judeo-Christianity, Protestant America is dwindling away. One trigger would start total destruction like a set of dominoes ready to topple. But if it weren't for one thing, this one thing is found in the next verse. Revelation 7 verse 3. Four angels are holding all of this back. Why are they holding it? It's because we're not sealed, folks. We're not. Jesus in his mercy takes pity on us. And he's holding back that frenzy of such destruction for us. But nevertheless, it is coming. As preparation for the sealing, we are now doing soon to culminate into the National Sunday Law. Yes, it certainly is. Preceding the National Sunday Law is the whirlwind. Because this will happen first, then the Sunday Law next. But we have a short time before that whirlwind surprises us. It is at this point to ask ourselves this most important question. Is our calling and election in Jesus sure? Is, it, is your ship anchored? into Christ. Understanding this scripture is critical so that we may not be one of the shocked five foolish virgins panicking to go out and buy oil for a character like Christ. Because in Christ's object lessons makes it very clear in a crisis the character is revealed. You don't make a character when you're in a panic in a crisis. It's done. So how close are we really to be awakened? Let's look at what we do know. In Revelation 13, 11, we're very familiar of American and Bible prophecy that she has two horns like a lamb, but she will eventually speak like a dragon. We know that we Americans are feeling the dragon's breath right upon us. Never have we ever lived like we have in the past year. Daniel 1140 also complements Revelation 1311 because what we just read in Daniel 1140 is also about the United States American Bible prophecy and her two stages of being a lamb with the religious Protestant America to become eventually, at a certain point, to join Satan as a dragon. In 1798, the time of the end, France became atheistic, ungodly, to push against all religions, whether the religion was good and holy or whether that religion was papal supremacy or wrong. Both were pushed out. Since then, atheistic left has been gaining ascendancy to now in America, it is the ruling power. Just as this verse states, 
the king of the south and the king of the north represent ideologies against God's people globally. The king of the south which is atheism like Egypt and France represents the left which took out the Pope in 1798. The king of the north represents the religious right. Both sides are sabotaged. The papacy is active on both sides using this term Hegelian dialectic. Now don't be concerned with that term. It just means that two opposing sides are pushing against each other to get a predetermined result. Whereas otherwise you wouldn't get it. Satan knows what he's doing. So the push continues. Either side is in position to push the National Sunday Law, folks. Either side. But for different reasons. The left for the environment and the political reasons of control. The right is for a moral society and to worship God. But which do you suppose that Satan wants for himself? To be just in control politically? On the left? Or does he on the right? want to actually be worshipped. The right has been ecumenically uniting more today to face a common enemy. It is about to reach its boiling po point to react from being so pushed out of their Judeo-Christianity of lifestyle that they cannot even live it anymore. The religious right want the return of their prosperity, freedoms, and a godly society of peace. An American religious right is Protestantism. And I too am a religious right of Protestantism. God has blessed America. It has been a haven and asylum for all those who wish to worship God freely in the lamb light stage. Until it becomes the fraud's false prophet at a turning point when it reaches out to the papacy, then the religious right at that point, not before, becomes the dragon stage that joined together in the Trinity found in Revelation 16, 13 of Satan, the false prophet, which is Protestantism of America, and the papacy. Let's listen to this most important and popular quote to validate this found in Great Controversy. Protestantism will reach across the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power for a threefold union. We are all familiar with this text. We all expect it and yes it will come. Now let's examine this more carefully. Here's a chart here to explain what I've just said. And on this chart you see divided in two columns. The king of the south and the king of the north and the characteristics underneath each. Both are the enemies of the saints. And why do I say this? Because it takes back in history after Alexander the Great. You had four generals. Made the best man win. It got down to two generals. The Seleucid line with Antiochus were ruling north of Israel in Syria, Iran today, Iraq, Turkey, and the opposing force that was left was the Ptolemy line south of Israel at Egypt. Now what do you suppose is the shortest route to go to war with each other? Who sits in the middle of that? What nation? Israel. Israel finds themselves to be pushed back and forth like we do today, pushed back and forth as we see these characteristics on each line progress. On the left, please look and look, follow me on the left, King of the South. That came from the famous quote from Pharaoh. I don't know your God, neither will I let your people go. That signifies as a running thread of atheism and that ideology throughout for us today. That continued into 1798 when France had had enough of religion. 
all religion, good or wrong. And through their revolution, they got rid of it all. It became the goddess of reason, atheism. And from that point, we have Karl Marx and other who wrote and permeated throughout our society today of communism, socialism, and all of these strong isms that we are pushing back and forth. That leaves us globally as saints, not as Israel as a nation, but globally Israel as a saints of Sabbath keeping believers facing with the push and pull of ideology, of isms, and godlessness, atheism, and destructiveness. Now let's take our eyes and go over to the right column of King of the North and we find that this Daniel in Daniel 2, Babylon is Nebuchadnezzar's chosen instrument to take Judah. Daniel then becomes papal supremacy with the papal power. And then America, which is God-blessed in an asylum for the whole world, is a lamb to beckon all to Judeo-Christianity living as Protestants. But, lastly, sadly, it will eventually at point become part of the Satan's trinity, as it says in Revelation 13. So, since this push and pull is happening right now, you find key words in many different speeches that is calling for revival. You hear different ministers, you hear different speakers, you hear different businessmen saying we need a revival. We need a society back to God. And this quote will validate that in sermons and talk from the minister in the desk. You will hear peace, peace. There is to be a temporal millennium first before Christ will come. And this is exactly what the whole religious movement is trying to get back, is to ha take back the world for God so that we can get back to a Judeo-Christianity living and to have peace and prosperity. However, soon to come upon us, with their great intention of revival, Satan walks in to sabotage it and it becomes the counterfeit revival. This is taken from her writings which is exemplified in Revelation 13. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time for such a movement shall come, Satan will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. In those churches which he can bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out spiritualism get the feeling that's my words there will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest multitudes will exalt that God is working marvelously for them when the work is of another spirit and under a religious guise Satan will seek to extend his influence over the whole Christian world and remember the soul train quote that I read to you earlier all are on board but God's undeceived people. And here it is in the Bible, Revelation 13, 12 through 14. And he, the false prophet, Protestantism, exercises all the authority of the first beast, the papacy, in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, the papacy, whose deadly wound was healed. He, the false prophet of Protestantism, performs great signs so that even he, the false prophet, makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now is that ever part of the Trinity? And he, false prophet, deceives those who dwell upon the earth by those signs which he was granted by who? 
Satan to do the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell upon the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. With the excitement of the counterfeit revival, this deception unites humanity into believing that the long-awaited millennium of peace has arrived. But, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them so bad that it's declared to be labor. The reign of peace and safety is punctuated with increasing disasters with such intensity that people look to God to please him. What can we do? We have to do something great. So it's the people, the grassroots, pushing for the National Sunday Law. As it says here, to secure popularity and patronage, legislatures will yield up to the demand from who? the people who vote for them for a national Sunday law. Now, if the left remains in, just think about this. If the left remains in office to continue their agenda of undoing America into a type of communism and society without morality, well, it may be that we headed for destruction, but it still doesn't describe Revelation 13 as a religious superpower for America. So it is that this administration has signed up America with the Pope's climate change, which includes Sunday restrictions, but the left's use of Sunday is political, whereas the right's use of Sunday is religious, with miracles, signs, and wonders as stated in Revelation 13. So what can we do about this? First of all, don't be distracted. This is a time to prepare for being sealed into primitive godliness. There is no other time but now. As my last quote is a comfort to us. Angels are belting around the world, refusing Satan's his claims to supremacy, made because of the vast multitude of his adherents. We hear not the voices, we see not with the natural sight of the work of these angels, but their hands are linked around the world, and with sleepless vigilance, they are keeping the armies of Satan at bay till the sealing of us, God's people, shall be accomplished. Let's pray that we will not be distracted. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, these are awesome times we live in and you are so merciful you're so comforting you're so loving and so kind that you give us time for you to seal our hearts into you and your character bless your holy name lord we praise it we praise your name in jesus name amen